To an American entertainer in London, one fact stands out above all the rest. Vaudeville or variety in this country is anything but dead. And one reason why this form of entertainment, practically extinct in America, is full of lusty life over here, lies in the tremendous loyalty of English music hall fans. A man like Will Fife, our first guest, commands the loving admiration of the halls year after year. Mr. Fife, Scotland's finest character comedian, is no stranger to America either. He must have thousands of friends listening in on the other side of the water tonight, and speaking for them, we welcome back their own Will Fife. I suppose you realize that we're taking you over to America tonight. Ah, uh, that's right, Rudy. But here, this is the first time I've ever got over to America without paying my fare. <laughs> How many times have you been to the States, Will? Me? I've been over there collecting five times up to now. But I'll hear, I'll never forget the first time that I landed in America. <laughs> I landed on the Levi Nathan... Uh, no, you mean the Leviathan, Will, the Leviathan. Ah, the Leviathan, that's right. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rudy. I always get mixed up with the names of the owners of the boat. <laughs> well, anyhow, Rudy, I landed at the dock side there with all my luggage, and I got hold of a yellow taxi driver, you see? And I said to this guy... What's that? Uh, you see, I haven't forgotten your language yet. <laughs> I said to this guy, I said, Say, Bo, I said, what... what? I said, what will you charge me to drive me to the Rich Scouton Hotel? He said, oh, a dollar fifty. I said, well, what about all this luggage? Oh, he says, we always take the luggage in the United States for nothing. So I sent my luggage up with a taxi driver and I walked up. <laughs> Proving that Mr. Fife is indeed Scotch. He's going to do for us now London's favorite among his score or more character studies, The Centenarian, in which he impersonates a man of 100 years on his 100th birthday. Go to it, Will. <laughs> There's been a great commotion in the village down the bray. You'll wonder what it's all about. Well, I'll tell you right away. This morning was my birthday, and I've lived a hundred years. That's why you hear the pipers and the shouting and the cheers. Ah, a hundred years ago today, a hundred years ago, and Scotland's in the same place still. Man, I've had lots of time to spare, so I wandered everywhere. Crossed the sea and toddled the land, our money a weary hell, but there's no place like the old place. For him's him wherever you may go. Oh, the stories I could tell, for mind you, I've enjoyed myself. And I'd like to start it over again a hundred years ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's not so bad for an old yin, eh? <laughs> a hundred years of age this morning at twenty-six minutes past four. I am that. I, I'm, 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 I'm the oldest man standing up in a perpendicular position in Scotland at the present moment. I'm a centenarian. <laughs> Oh, and you should see the letters that I've had today from doctors and professors all over the world asking how I've managed to live so long. <laughs> and I've got a letter from a patent medicine company that sells pills offering me 15 shillings a week for life. <laughs> for life, mind you, just to say that I've been taking their pills every morning, but that's where they're wrong. See? Because I'll tell you, the reason, the reason I've lived so long as I have done is this. I never smoked cigarettes or drank whiskey or went out with women until I was nearly 14 years of age. The secret? That's the secret. There's no mistake about it. Oh, but I've had a wonderful birthday today. <laughs> and you should see the present that I got from his lordship, the owner of this big estate in Scotland. Bless him. <laughs> he gave me the very thing I've been wanting for years and years. <laughs> a motorcycle. <laughs> I'll be able to go out with the rest of the lads on a Sunday now. 
And I'm having a pillion seat fixed in the back. Tell you, there's no time to waste now. <laughs> no. No. And you should have heard the speeches, beautiful speeches. And I will say this, that our minister, uh, for a change, he spoke very well. And he did that. Me, I was surprised to see the minister there, because him and me had a very big quarrel about four years ago, and we just made friends today, and we quarreled over a simple thing. It was one Sunday I met the minister, and I asked him to do me a favor, he wouldn't do it. I said, Minister, when you're saying the prayer today, would you mind mentioning a few words about my floating kidney? You see, I've got a very bad floating kidney, and they're dangerous, because you never know where I might float to. And I wanted him to mention it to see if it would do a bit of good, and he would not do it. Just laughed at me in front of everybody. He said, Man, William, I'm sorry, I, I can't mention such a thing in my prayer. There's a floating kidney. Well, I don't think that was fair of the minister, because the very Sunday before that, he spoke for three quarters of an hour about loose livers, and I don't see why he shouldn't say a few words. Oh, but I was a happy birthday, but I think I'll have to toddle away home now. So goodness to you, I must go home now. You know, I'm not feeling so good lately, you know, and I can't go the pace like I used to do when I was 90. No, no. And I'm not feeling so good. I've got this floating kidney. I've got a touch of heart trouble. My blood's out of order. And I've got rheumatoid arthritis, sciatica, pleurisy, and a touch of lumbago as well. Aye. Oh, but that's nothing as long as I've got my health and strength. There's nothing to bother about. No, no. Well, good next to you. And thank you for being so kind to an old Scotsman on his last birthday. There's only one thing missing today. And that's my old lady. <laughs> I wish she'd been alive to see me today. <laughs> she'd have been a proud old lady, but she's gone. She's gone, and just the last when she died, just at her very best, 86 when she died. 86. We all thought she'd pull around, but it was no good. No, no, but the baby lived. Oh, yes, the baby lived. Yes. Oh, uh, ah. Oh, I was glad of that. He'll, he'll be a great comfort in my old age when he grows up, the boy. <laughs> well, good night to you. And I hope to see you in Scotland among the heather one of these days. Just come over and have a holiday. Good night, Trudy. <laughs> good night, boys. <laughs> oh, the stories I could tell. For mind you, I've enjoyed myself. And I'd like to start it over again. A hundred years ago.